Clearfeld, if you guys remember, man, we pounded the table on this. He was on this show many times as Clearfeld exploded. Then in the same sector, he recently gave us calm and the thing just exploded last couple of days on a Credit Suisse upgrade. So, Chris, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, good morning, Ben. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Um, good. Definitely want to hear about calm, but also, uh, you know, your thoughts on kind of what's better, Clearfeld or calm. But let us know what happened with calm first. Sure, absolutely. Actually, there's there's sort of two catalysts in the space that are affecting both stocks. Um, so I'll, I'll get to the COM upgrade report by Credit Suisse here in a minute. What I want to talk about is both stocks have moved in the sort of uh, August, uh, early September time frame, and then both had you know subsequent pullbacks with, with the broader market. Um, the one catalyst I want to call out that sort of came out on Friday that affects both companies in the space in general is there is um, some a bipartisan bill coming out of the Senate uh, led by uh, Mark Warner, Virginia, and Jerry Moran out of Kansas. And basically what this bill does is for a lot of the grant money that's coming out on all of these broadband builds, um, it's basically making the grants that the company companies would get, which are customers of Clearfield and Comscope, be tax exempt. So this bill basically would save um clearfield and comms customers 20 percent so they don't have to pay taxes on the grant money so it's important for us to sort of watch this bill go through and really what it does is look i mean they're throwing 65 billion dollars um at broadband builds and if it can save you know these companies an extra 20 percent, it only gives them more incentive and more fuel to the fire for telecom companies and rural cooperators and electric companies that are getting into the broadband space to go out and build gigabit networks or build fiber optic networks. So I think the jump that we saw on Clearfield on, on Friday was primarily related to this. Um, Comscope sort of followed suit on Monday and Tuesday um, when Credit Suisse came out with uh, an upgrade, uh, a price target jump from 11 to 17. Now, what's interesting with Credit Suisse is during their analyst reports or in their analyst upgrades, they also paint what they call a blue sky scenario and a gray sky scenario. So while their new price target is 17, they also say in optimum conditions, that price target may jump to 23. And in less optimum conditions, the price target is down to nine. So look, Comscope's already had a pretty, pretty big jump here this week due to this analyst report. But if you see the stock sort of pull back into that low 10, high nine range, that's basically the floor that Credit Suisse is calling out. And I said their mainline price target is 17, but their blue sky is also 23. So let's go into the re report a little bit. And, and some of these sort of call outs that they're, they're making are, are also would be related to Clearfoot as well. Um, they talk about how they've done uh, channel checks on how strong the, um, the the broadband fiber build sector is. They've talked about how um, their their channel checks are also getting uh, better pricing with their customers, obviously due to the, the high demand. And then they also talk about how any supply pressures that may have been having in the marketplace, they seem to you know call out that they're going to be abating here in late 2022 uh, 20, uh, and, and also in 2023. For Comscope specific, they also increased how much debt uh, that they think Comscope is going to retire next year, upping their estimate from, um, I believe, $400 million to $500 million and some dramatic uh, increases uh, in cash flow. So but basically a very bullish report. Uh, you know, um, what we've been saying about Clearfield, very strong industry um, tailwinds over the next five to seven years um, in terms of the broadband investment. Um, you know, there's three or four different you know, sort of broadband grants that the government's doing. One's in play right now. There's a couple others that are just ramping up at, at the end of this year and into 2023. So you see this this long five to seven year tailwind that they've been talking about. Okay, great. That's awesome. So, you know, I, I looked at these. I, I made nice money on Clearfeld on the way up. Don't have a huge position. So I've actually been over the last couple of weeks buying more calm than, than Clearfeld. Um, you know, when I look at seven, what, 10 to 17, that seems huge. Like, so what do you, what do you think is a better opportunity here? You see, I, I'm showing the comparisons on the screen and you see Clearfeld is up over six months, 42% versus Com 15%. Is it, uh, look at the one year, Clearfeld up 146% versus 
minus 23% on com. Is that right? So That's right. Um, is that a, a superficial way of looking at it? That, hey, Clearfeld had its run, com didn't. Now we got the catalyst of Credit Suisse. Maybe com is a better play or, or which one do you think is a better play? Well, it, it depends. Um, look, there, there's obviously pluses and minuses on both sides, and, and, I'll, and I'll cover both. So Calm obviously has a massive debt load. You're, you're talking eight to nine billion dollars of debt, okay? So a lot of their earnings are going to back to repay that debt. A very small part of Calm's debt is floating. Um, so I think what you see for Calm the last year or two is basically they've been put in the penalty box. You know, they've done a lot of high-priced acquisitions. Ruckus Networks comes to mind. Um, so they're, they're, they have these massive debt loads. They're also, um, a, a much larger company than Clearfield. So it takes a time, you know, for a while to, to turn the ship, so to speak. Um, obviously their, their multiple is a lot less than Clearfield's, but again, we would get back to the massive debt loads. The advantages for Clearfield are it's basically debt free. They've got a little bit of debt from the acquisition they just made of the finished fiber optic company. Um, but Clearfield's more specialized well, i wouldn't say specialized but but their marketplace is more in the tier two tier three fiber build market where you know a lot of the um grant money from the government is, is spearheaded um so they're i won't say they're more narrow focused but their marketplace is definitely more centered on where you know a lot of the focus or a lot of the money, the grant money that, that, that it's going to. Not to say, not to say that Com won't participate. I think they will. But remember, you know, this is this part of the line of business uh, that we're talking about is about forty to forty-five percent of Com's overall business. While for Clearfield, it's you're looking at almost eighty to ninety percent. So I think the the broader market drawdown here in the last thirty days um, has given people who missed the boat on either one um an, an opportunity to relook at both um you know with the earnings growth that they're talking about for both these companies you're looking anywhere from 45 to 70 percent uh over the next 12 months and from there you know we'll recalibrate but you know i think you've got increasing margins um you've got increasing profitability and i think the earnings growth um still calls for uh you know a higher um pe ratio than than what you're seeing out in in, in other sectors hey ben i lost your audio oh, i'm back yeah there i know go. i was saying like one of the things I, I love about this sector is it's pretty much recession resistant if not recession proof like how, how would you categorize it recession resistant or recession proof I, look in the next five years i think it's recession proof um nice. you know and and i think that you know, if if commodity prices and stuff like that starts to fall, then it, it's only going to help. You know, their their bottom line. Um, but the the money's there, the growth is there. I think, especially for Clearfield, I think you're going to see, you know, huge jump in backlogs because a lot of these companies. And, and I'll give an example. On, on Monday, when one of Clearfield's customers just got a grant for 85 million um, to spend over the next two or three years. So I think the way that Clearfield is managing their customers is, is to say, okay. You know, if you're getting these, you know, 50, 100, 200 million dollar grants, you know, start placing your orders with us now over the next two to three years so we can effectively, you know, plan ahead for for this growth. Both companies in the last year have built, you know, new manufacturing plants in Mexico. So they know the growth is coming. Right. And they've distanced themselves from China and Southeast Asia in terms of, you know, transport and other geopolitical issues, tariffs, et cetera. And so they built these manufacturing plants in Mexico, um, not only to increase profitability, but to increase speed to market. That's one of the reasons why, why Clearfield bought that finished fiber optic company is so they could take that technology and they could start building it in Mexico instead of having to get it transported from Finland. So I, I think you not only do you see these huge revenue gains for these companies, but I think you see them really now start to engineer um, higher margins and higher profitability when this sort of avalanche of revenue starts to flow in um, in the next, you know, six months. And and, and all signs point to it's, it's going to last here for five to seven years, if not longer. Awesome. Chris, thank you so much. Uh, great asset to our community. Great picks. Uh, really appreciate your time. You bet. Thanks, Ben. Thank you.